Welcome back. Jane Austen is a familiar name in English literature and as part of the promotion of the movie, the Jane Austen book club, Inox, organized a book reading which was hosted by Alice. This was done so that people gain an understanding of the author and her style of portraying characters. Speaking at the function, Alice pointed out that students read these classics only as a part of the syllabus and wondered if they read for pleasure. The young people's reading habits have changed. In fact, they hardly reading nowadays. Not, not people read today. In my class of 70 students of English uh, language, I would, be, I would find it very difficult, and it's embarrassing to say that I would find it very difficult to get four people who would be in the process of reading anything other than their texts. So in that kind of an atmosphere, to find someone who would have read Jane Austen or who's reading Jane Austen today, of course we have Pride and Prejudice as a text, but then their reading therefore is very limited to just an academic study of the text. Would they read Jane Austen for pleasure? Would they read her to learn something out of uh, uh, what she has to, to share with us as a writer, as a young woman who lived during the Victorian age, uh, as somebody who understood the cultures and the manners and the nuances of language and behavior of her time? Would they read her for that? Would they read her for pleasure? Or would they read her just as a text? Speaking about the author and her works, Alice said that the story is of the author and to understand the novel, one has to know about Jane Austen. Understanding Jane Austen herself would go a long way in helping us to appreciate what she produced. Because I think uh, if you take the book um, Pride and Prejudice, which Jane Austen herself considered to be her favourite, uh, or if you take Emma, which is one of my favourites and one which uh, I have read a little more deeply than the others, if you take these, you will find that the narrator is definitely Jane Austen, even though uh, it's, a, it's a narrator who doesn't name herself. The narrator in Emma is not Emma, it is somebody else. It is a character that's present there all the time. And you are therefore, therefore reading Emma is not easy because you're not, all the time you wonder, is it Emma who's talking or is it Jane Austen who's talking? And if you don't know much about Jane Austen, you might think this is just a character. And therefore Emma redu is reduced to, is brought down to just a literary character. Whereas if you know Jane Austen and if you understand something about her background and where she came from and the social uh, context from which she came, then I think you would uh, enjoy reading her novels a little more. Mrs. De Cruz gave an insight into the Victorian age and also of the main theme in most of Jane Austen's novels. They learn manners and how to find their, their, their boyfriends and how to find men to marry because that seems to be, marriage seems to be the preoccupation with uh, Jane Austen. Uh, and why was it so? It was because she was living in an age where men were, or, or boys were encouraged to be educated, whereas girls were not. The girls, if you see this similar thing happening in India, it's been happening uh, all the time through the ages, where women were expected to stay at home, and so the typical Victorian scene, and most of the films that have been made based on Jane Austen, are of the young girls sitting indoors in these very cozy kind of uh, homes, knitting and embroidering and talking about little things, very giggly kind of uh, conversations. But Jane Austen um, extricates characters from that, from that stereotypical idea that we have of the Victorian uh, lady. And she raises them above this to show you that the women, the female characters in her novels, are those who want to be, pro to prove their intelligence. They don't want to be considered like the, the, the other. Come December and along with it come various college festivals. Trendsetters, the annual concert of the IIAS College, was held for the eighth consecutive year. Trendsetters is a dance and fashion show where colleges from all over Goa participate. <laughs>
Young Berlin Talents of the IIAS College on the ramp at the moment you could see the young dynamic Sonal and Ashi Mohammed and Has almost become a part of the college curriculum. The various colleges that participated were Silgaonkar College of Law, Dempe, Dempos, Don Bosco's, Institute of Hotel Management, Damodar, and the Home Science College. Winning this competition is a very prestigious achievement and most of these colleges even hire choreographers to do the sequences for the dance. Before we end, here is a reminder of the headlines. Chief Minister urges pharma companies to contribute to the welfare of Goans. Lecture basis teachers protest against the government's apathy towards them. Young Abacus genius to be felicitated by NGOs. We'll be back tomorrow with more news and analysis for you. Until then, it's goodbye and good night.